All right. So another thing that is lined up, mm -hmm. November 7th, I cannot freaking wait. Mm-hmm. Naola, Naoya, in in a way, in a way, which you always make me, you know, make me get it right here. Uh -huh. But we, I think everybody needs to get it right because in a way is, I'm 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 moving to the place that he might where, be pound for pound. That he might be the best fighter in the world. Maybe he might be the best yeah. fighter in the world. Now Donair is not the Donair of before. No, but that fisty that fisty has up right there yeah. is still a heck of a weapon. That left hook is one he has hey, to, you know, has to has to be accounted for. It could be who lands their punch first. It could be, but I am of the belief In a way, that I mean, he's a machine, man. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Oh my God. Like I'm telling you, yeah, I, I, you guys may what's not the, what's the what's the date on that fight? November 7th. What does the chat think about him? Because we saw him in the uh what series was it? The, the World uh, Boxing Super Series. This is the this is dominant. the coma. This is the uh this is the final of that. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. I so, thought he won the final. No, right. I think he's no. gonna win the final. I think he was I think he's gonna win the final too. Where's the fight? And, and I hate you know what? You know what I hate though? I hate that like I have it that open and shut because I really do love Donaire. I've always liked Donaire, but man, this this dude is uh look this this dude is different, man. The way I look at in a way is the way that like I think a lot of people looked at Chocolate Tito, um, you know, Roman Gonzalez. Yes. Uh, when he was considered pound for pound champ, he kind of flew under the radar. Mm -hmm. But for boxing people, like we knew mm -hmm. that he was pound for pound. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The fight's in Saitama, Japan, so that don't help Donair either. <laughs> <laughs> what what weight is in a way? Uh that is they're fighting at um uh at uh uh bantamweight it's a bantamweight right, uh, think, right so yeah i mean you know look some of the best exciting fights have taken place at bantamweight um, yes you know at smaller weights honestly it's a shame for me mm -hmm. that that i mean i'm just going to be real um i would love to manage some guys at that weight because i just think some of the best fights and exciting fights happen at those weights yeah it just doesn't pay yeah, does a pay, and, and I don't know why because it's size bias, man. It's size bias, but it's and the, yeah, the public dictates what the value of the fighters are. But I think it's American public because it's not that way in other countries, especially not in Asia. Okay, well, American public and American networks are the ones that are paying fighters right thirty so, million a fight. So it's like they they are they are driving the marketplace exactly. So, but that that's the answer to your question. Yeah, but it's you a know, shame because. Yeah. There we can name like you've brought up names in the past like Ricardo Torres and um and you know even when Mark Michael Carbajal was a, a star coming out of the Olympics uh too sharp I, too sharp I mean you know there's so many other fighters that uh, even Prince Nassim Hamed I mean you know when even though he was featherweight still I mean featherweight you know, is about the lowest that people yeah. will normally pay attention yeah it's a shame I I wish that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. Because there are some uh, some very exciting fights that if they were to get highlighted, people would just, I mean, some of these guys fight 36 minutes in a phone booth and the output of punches and the skill level and the movement, um, you know, even uh, a friend of ours, Brian Valoria. Uh, yes, you know, when yes. Fought, it was very exciting. And Brian Valoria is a funny dude too. Like well, you, you got to spend a little time. Yeah, with him, right? he's he's funny. Like he for, funny. <laughs> he's yeah. got his he's got a, his wit is like yeah, he's, he's a good. funny dude. He's, and he's funny turning dude. and he's really coming into his own as a trainer as yes. well. You know, you know, he trains uh one of my he fighters Chris, Chris. here. Yeah, yeah. 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 By the way, Chris, uh, side note, had an excellent interview uh, at the WBC LA office on their podcast today. It, mm -hmm. you know, it goes beyond boxing. You know, it yes, it does. On, did you get a chance to catch? I it? got it. I didn't get a chance to listen to the whole thing, but I did get a chance to listen okay. to some of it. And I, I, I really I, Look, so here's the yeah, thing. If I'm and right. I'll say this because Peter knows him much better than I do. Uh, but but you've spent some time. I, I've spent time. Know. I've definitely spent time with him. There are some people in the world that you when you meet them they have a, a aura of just like wow this is a really nice person just just they just carry that and this dude i'm telling you like he's going into his way in for the fight right kids are getting on the uh, elevator he's literally initiating conversations with kids 
putting his arm around the kids. I mean, and there's no cameras around, so there's, he's not doing this. So people could go, oh, Chris, Her Chris Van Newton's a great guy. This is just the net. And then so I'd only met Chris one time, and it was virtual, right? right? So I walk up to him, and I say, and I'm about to introduce myself. And he's like, oh, I know you. You're Brian. You're from the interview. And we talked about the McGregor. Da, 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 and just like – it's just it's some people some people are just different some people are just gifted in in the way of being amicable and being uh courteous and no matter what he does as a fighter chris chris van Eerden's greatest gift is his is his humanity and his personality that's what he's a gentleman yes 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 and he's, and he's honest yeah he's authentic mm -hmm. and you know uh, he He's going to get a shot at this welterweight title because I'm going mm -hmm. to make that happen. Mm -hmm. But he is just, you know, a genuine human being. And, you know, he'll crack, crack the top 15. Look, you know, he people underestimate him. I mean, his only real loss in his 30 fights is to Errol Spence. Yeah. And Spence, I mean, Spence gives him his props for the fight, too. So, yeah. 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 So anyway, I just, you know, I wanted to put that out there. If you have an opportunity and you can find that on the WBC Facebook page or YouTube channel, it was it was a pretty inspiring interview, not just because I work with Chris. Uh, it just talks about his faith, his his coming, uh, overcoming adversity, tragedy. His father was murdered last year in South Africa. Um, there's a lot of problems in South Africa right now, and mm -hmm. you know, Chris said he he forgives the guy that killed his dad. I mean, it's 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 um, for the greater good of what he wants to see for his country. And it was a and 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 it's important to note that uh, it wasn't just that somebody he forgives the guy that killed his dad. It was a racially motivated murder. And um, uh, it, it, Chris Van Uden is a white South African, and he was for anybody that doesn't know. And his dad was killed in a racially motivated uh, incident by um, black South Africans. And uh, I felt that it's very important for everybody to understand that racism going any way, left or right, back and forth, black towards white, white towards black, however it comes, is is a horrible thing. And it's not just, obviously it's more predominant with with it happening to, um, uh, to African-Americans, especially in this country. Right. But across the world, there are people that are having things done to them you know it, it, because of their race and it's not just you know one race that is always the victim or the recipient but even through that chris still maintains who he is he still talked to me and treated me the way he did he still talked to my son and treated my son the way he did didn't know him at all so uh i think that's a definite inspiration but like you said it's an aura it goes beyond you know beyond boxing beyond mm -hmm. it's humanity and that's who he is Yes, um, yes. And, you know, I, that's why I, I want the best for him because, uh, and the interview was just, it was, it was, and, you know, you're a man of faith. Mm -hmm. um, the two of you have that in common. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, if you watch the whole interview, uh, he gets into that. Um, but he's just real. Yeah. You know, he's just yeah. real. Uh, and, and I love when I see fighters that give other fighters props uh, when they could admit when they've fallen short, uh, when they could be just, you know, a little vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and talk openly so it was it was a great it was a great platform i, I you know I'm, I'm i'm grateful for the wbc for giving them that opportunity today and then it, i think it was i think it was one of their more special interviews so if you have an opportunity guys check that out yeah i'll make sure we put the link to it in the description of the video so you can check it out